All right, so this is option two on how to put together a virtual subplan. Uh, the programs that I'm going to be using uh, to show you guys how to do that uh, and the ones that I have used very typically in these situations. I've got some examples of subplans that I've done uh, on my YouTube channel, which I will link uh, to the slide that you're watching this on. Uh, but the programs I'm going to be linking are programs that you all have access to. They're all free. Uh, and that is uh, QuickTime, iMovie, uh, Firefox, um, and a specific function within Firefox that I found pretty handy. And uh, then last but not least, YouTube. So um, this would be perfect for a day that, you know, you it's a professional development day. Maybe it's a release day that you have to meet with your grade level team. It might be scoring a benchmark. It could be a, a we call it a sick day. Um, and it's when you have some time built in uh, to make that sub plan. I, I did an earlier video where uh, you could put together a fairly quick one in less than 20 minutes. This one takes a little bit longer, but uh, I'm going to show you the steps that have worked well for me. And hey, if this doesn't work well for you, well, that's okay. Take what you can from this uh, instructional video. So what I'm doing right now is I'm screencasting. And you can tell that I'm screencasting uh, first off by looking at up here. QuickTime, which all of us have installed on our computers, uh, is a great tool to use for a screencast. And I am speaking right now. It is recording my screen as you see it. I know it's recording my screen because if I come up here in the top right, I will see that uh, I've got the record screen on. If I click on that button, that'll stop the recording. And I'm not going to do that. But I guess the question would be, OK, fine. How do I do a screencast? It's very, very simple. I can't stop this screencast to show you because then that'll be somewhat difficult. But basically, you just click on QuickTime, open it up, click on File, and then the option that says New Screen Recording uh, will pop up. It then will give you the option. Uh, it'll pop up, and I'll do some screenshots here of it uh, in a second uh, on the video that I'm splicing together doing the same process that I'm showing you. Uh, to show you what happens after you click new screen recording right here. Um, so that will be explained, but I'll give you the basics. Basically, a little record button comes up when you're ready to start recording. You click it. An option will show up on the center of the screen that will say, okay, do you want to record the entire screen or do you want to just uh, record a portion of it? Now, if you want to record a portion of it, that's pretty easy. It's basically, it'll give you the option of doing something like this, where you frame the portion of the screen that you want recorded. And that way, say, if you wanted to have some notes on the side, you know, for a lecture or whatever, um, all the viewer would see is what you have highlighted. And then once you either click the screen or highlight like so, there's usually about a two to five second delay. And then when this little white uh, button pops on your computer, you are recording. Um, and so again, I'm going to show you guys how to, to do that uh, right now. We'll show you some, some picks uh, momentarily. So here, take a look at the picks of the steps that I just said. All right, so now that you've kind of gotten the basics of uh, doing a screencast using QuickTime, and there's tons of other ways of doing it, Aaron Anderson is doing a, a, one of his sessions on, uh, I believe it's Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, but this is just a, a nice one that's embedded right here in your computer. Um, so typically what I would do uh, when I'm doing this type of subplan, where I have, say, you know, an hour or so to prepare, um, I usually use either Google Slides or PowerPoint as the backdrop of my explanation. This is what I'm going to be sharing with the students, sharing with the substitute teacher. So I've already got a PowerPoint pulled up here. Now, as you can see, it just popped up on your screen. And as soon as I go to full screen, just like I were presenting in class, that is what everybody sees. And this is where I would start out by saying, hey, everybody, sorry I'm not sick today. I'm out of professional development, etc." And I would give the instructions for the class. I might talk about reminders whether it be about classroom procedures, you know, whether it be about any homework that they have to turn in, etc. But I use PowerPoint as, or Google Slides, or Keynote. I've never used Keynote, but same 
same principle to give my instruction. So this is a um, an introduction to American imperialism on the Panama Canal. Now what you see here is actually a video. Now unfortunately using uh, the uh, screencast option it's gonna come through very very choppy. Okay, So like when I try and play this video it's probably coming through very choppy at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and progress to the next slide. It's been called one of the seven wonders of the modern world. A man-made waterway, 50 miles long, that forever altered the face of the earth. The Panama Canal exceeded any country's capacity. If in 1904 you asked me to put money, I would have said, no, it cannot be built. Nobody knew how this was gonna be done. The geographic location of Panama, the isthmus of Panama, has always been coveted as a way of making the oceans meet. With the building of the Panama Canal, the realization of a dream became an expression of the power, the strength, the might of a growing nation. For nearly a hundred years, the Panama Canal has stood for the triumph of technology over nature. But when it was built at the dawn of the 20th century, it was simply an audacious gamble, a colossal engineering project, the likes of which the world had never seen. It's a story of inspiration. It's a story of humanity. What man can endure with the pick and shovel to dig the canal. It used science and engineering and government to improve the country and really improve the world. But it has a dark side as well. It is also a symbol of arrogance, authority and power. The canal really announced the United States as the leading country in the world. It demonstrated an extraordinary will and determination. They had succeeded in conquering nature as no one had ever done before. So this is where I would need YouTube because I want to find that video or a video like it, put it in front of uh, this portion of the screencast, and then continue with, in this case, it's, it's a lecture. And I will always have points throughout the presentation where I'll say something like, and now if our substitute teacher could please pause the presentation, uh, I'll, that'll let everybody work. It simplifies the sub plan. It, it takes it out of the sub's hands in terms of being the bad guy because all they're doing is playing a video uh, that um, is you, or in this case, it's me. And the kids respond well to it. I've done it the last two years, the format that I've, I'm going over here, and the kids have responded well to it. Um, so anyway, you can continue. Go ahead, you know, going through, talking about your lecture, etc. Stopping at points, you know, you know, I might stop and have the kids discuss something they see on the map. But all I'm doing is progressing through a PowerPoint or a Google Slides, just like we do. Um, and then the other nice thing too is that if you have interactive notebooks, if you have, you know. Uh, binders that the kids keep. Um, if you've already made copies and you want them to work on paper and maybe you're teaching 9th or 12th grade and you don't have access to Chromebooks all the time or maybe you're teaching 10th and 11th and they haven't brought their Chromebooks. Um, what you can do is you can say, okay, um, so on your lecture notes, uh, I want you to respond to this headline in the following ways. Uh, how do these headlines differ? Consider the wording, etc. So you can explain to the students as if you're there and then you would say something like, okay, you've got five minutes to, to write your response. And then after that, if our substitute teacher could please restart the video. Pause for a second. And then you can restart again. Um, it's very simple, very straightforward. 
um, I'm able to basically be there without being there. And then, you know, you can do dramatic effects like you would in a lecture, right? And then this is the telegram of the main blowing up. Okay. So I think you guys get the gist. I'm just walking them through the PowerPoint and then we're done. Now, the nice thing is, is that if I wanted to continue, if I wanted to say, all right, everyone, I want you to log on to Google Classroom and do X, Y, Z, the screen, I can still do that. Now, plenty of times I've done these, especially when I'm trying to deliver like a lecture virtually, and, you know, I'll sneeze, I'll cough, I'll, I don't know, I'll, <laughs> I'll get a tongue twister, or I, I, you know, kind of like I am right now. Um, these all can be edited out. So at this point, I'm going to continue the screencast because I want to show you how I can get that video. So I'm going to open Firefox, and I know that, like, you know, people are Chrome, and that's cool. Chrome's fine. Firefox is fine. Safari's fine. They all do different things. They all do the same thing, which is, you know, get us to the Internet. If you're using Internet Explorer, though, that's weird. Sorry. That, that's just weird. Um, I'm just kidding, of course. So what I've already done is I pulled up, uh, I could not find the specific video that I wanted the students to watch, and I pulled up a different one. Now you'll notice here um, that I've just got the YouTube channel up, and there it is, right? Now this button here is an add-on, and this is an add-on called Easy YouTube Downloader. I've provided a link uh, to the site where you would download it. All you got to do is have Firefox on your computer and then click on the link that's provided in the Google Slides presentation and it will install this. So what I can do now is I can download this video um, either in video, so MP4 format, or just sound MP3 format. Now depending on the resolution, sometimes they'll have like 1080 and above. Most of the time you can download an MP4 at 720. Um, and so I'm gonna download this video. It's great to use for student projects too. So I click on it. And then if you looked up there it's in the top right hand corner, you'll see right now that my movie is downloading and there it is. So eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop that into, uh, into my uh, iMovie presentation. So the video is loading. And then once it loads, I'll show you guys how to, uh, to drop it into iMovie. All right, so now you can see that my video has loaded. Um, this is just a shortcut that I use to grab it. I, I like putting stuff on my desktop, kind of being at my workstation, and then when I'm done with a project, I'll delete the stuff that I don't want. So uh, using Firefox, when you click on that down button in the top right-hand corner, if you right-click on it, it'll give you the option that says Show in Finder. Um, what that means is it's going to show you using Finder, like, okay, where is this file that I just downloaded? And there it is. So all I have to do now is just drag and drop right there on my desktop. Now I have access to that video. Now, this video that I have here is a two minutes long, which is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be a conversation starter for the kids. Let's say, for example, you know, you, you have an hour-long video that you do the exact same thing that I just did, and you want to splice it down to only five minutes. I've done that before, and you can do that using iMovie. Um, so I've got my screencast going. I've got my video, and now I'm going to start dropping stuff into iMovie, which I will be. Okay, so at this point, I have gathered all my stuff. I've done my screencast. I've downloaded my YouTube video, any pictures that I want to put in. Uh, I just have to basically put it together so that way I can upload it to YouTube. The first thing I need to do is open iMovie. It'll prompt you to open a new project. It's very, very, very simple process. So from here, uh, what I want to do is I want to import media. So if I click on import up here at the top, the reason that I put stuff on my desktop is so that way it's easy to, to just grab when I'm working on a project. The first one that I'm going to import is that movie that I took from uh, YouTube on the Panama Canal. And there it is. Now I have a couple of options here. Uh, I'm going to bring the entire movie in, but let's just say that I wanted to bring in the section starting from here to here. I'd simply highlight the section that I want, and then from here grab the section and then drag it down into my storyboard. Uh, and don't worry, if you don't like it in your storyboard, you can just highlight it, hit delete, and it goes away. I want the entire clip though. 
So you can either double click or hit uh, Command A to select all. And then I'm going to drag this down into my storyboard. Now the storyboard view, you'll see I, the zoom button is over here. You can make it really big, you can make it really small. I usually start out by making it small and then widen it as I need to. The other clip that I'm going to import here is the screencast that I just did, uh, the first part of this video. Same process. And I am going to pull the entire thing and I'm going to drop it in front of my YouTube video. Now let's just say, for example, I want to put the video in the middle of my screencast. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. And I know for a fact that this is the part of the, of the movie right here that I want to insert it. Well, the first thing that I have to do is create space for it. So this little white thing right here, when you move your cursor back and forth, that is the playhead. And so I'm going to go ahead and listen to this and see if I can pick the right time to insert it. If you look down here at the bottom, you'll see the sound of my voice, the narration that's going on. So I'm going to just take a peek here and see where it should start. Okay, so let's say that's the point that I want to keep it at. Okay, from here, I just right click. Now you can also use uh, Command B if you wish. And what this is going to do, it's going to act like a pair of scissors. It's going to cut the clip right at the playhead. Okay, now from here, what I can do is instead of having two clips, I have three. And I can take that video and just drop it right in between. If you want to add transitions between the slides, you can. You can add additional text slides, just like you would in an iMovie. Um, but for the most part, you know, other than maybe clipping your screencast, uh, parts that you don't want, etc., that's pretty much the, the steps that you're going to take. From here, this is where you want to share uh, or finalize the movie project. So let's say that I'm done with the movie. I come up here to share. Now in the new version of iMovie and in the last couple of versions, they do have the option of you to directly upload to YouTube. But what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to create your own YouTube account. I would suggest using a personal YouTube account basically because it's not as restricting as our Sonoma Schools uh, .org account is. Um, and when you create that personal YouTube account, uh, if you've never done it before, it'll ask you to sign into that account just like you sign into your email. So all I would need to do if I were uploading this to my own YouTube channel is just click on this and then it would walk me through the steps of getting it there. I'm going to show you guys how to do it kind of the long form way and that is by just creating a movie file. So I'm going to click on file and then from here it's going to say okay these are the options that you have in terms of quality etc and as long as you're okay with these we'll click next and then you're going to title it and I'm going to title this uh, let's call this uh, okay and then click save and what it's going to do at this point is it's going to build now your status bar is right up here this little circle that you see here uh, it'll show you when the movie is um, complete Notice that I did have it saved to my desktop, so again, easy to find. And then uh, what I'll do on the next part of this video is I'll show you guys how to, uh, excuse me, how to upload it to YouTube. Okay, so now I'm ready to upload to YouTube. Um, one thing that you should do if you're planning on using this to deliver your sub plans, and you'll see there's one of mine uh, on my YouTube channel all the way at the bottom that I did earlier this month uh, and if you scroll over you'll not only see the videos that I'm using for the PD today but also uh, previous sub uh, lesson plans that have worked out really well so um, you wanna sign up a, a personal YouTube account I would uh, maybe not necessarily use your own but set up one that you're using just for uh, these type of uh, activities so that's what I did I set one up using my personal Gmail you can tell it's mine from the Star Wars stuff, obviously. Um, but this is where the sub plan would be delivered. And one of the things that I did mention is that you can either have the students access this through their laptops, or uh, if you have your own laptop that you can leave, like a spare. Um, some people do have spares, like an older one. All you need is something that can deliver, um, you know, that has an internet connection. Um, the Chromebooks that we have, uh, 
take an HDMI cord, um, which can easily be plugged into anybody's projector. So you could check out a Chromebook, uh, maybe with uh, whoever has got the Chrome cart the night before. Um, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Chromecast is another way too. Um, but uh, anyway, you want to think about how your students are going to be, you know, seeing this. I wrote a grant for a Chromebook uh, before we got our newest Chromebooks um, a couple of years ago for my Avid students, and it's kind of my spare. And so that's the one that I leave um, behind uh, when I have a sub. So um, at this point, I've got my sub plan, and there it is right there on my desktop, and I'm going to upload it to YouTube. So once I come to my channel, this is my YouTube channel, and once you sign in, you just have to come click on the uh, button on the left here, and it'll have, you know, there's your channel. So when I click on it, it brings me right back to here. And then all the way here at the top uh, is where I would upload. So I click on Upload. And I'm going to delete this once I upload it. So here it goes. I just drag it from my desktop and drop. And from here, it will process the video. Depending on the size of the video, uh, it'll take you know, anywhere between two to three to maybe 10, 15 minutes. As you can see, this one has about eight minutes remaining. Uh, looks like seven now, okay. And then once it is done, once this bar that you see right here is done, and it's reached 100%, all you would need to do is click Publish. And then what will happen is it will publish your YouTube. Um, this is the spot where you would change like the, um, the description of it, the title of it, you know, whether it's a publicly viewed, whether it's unlisted. Most of mine are unlisted. I made them public for today's PD, um, but most of mine are unlisted because I just, I don't know, I don't want people poking around that shouldn't be there. Uh, if you list them as private, that's an option too. It's totally up to you guys what you want to do. Um, and um, basically, once this bar, as I said, once it fills up and once you fill out your information, um, then it is not published into, into YouTube until you click that blue button. And once you do, it'll show up on your channel. And uh, it takes probably, once you publish, uh, about maybe two minutes possibly for the thumbnail to come up. Um, but basically, that's it. So I hope this helped. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, if you're at the high school campus, you know where to find me. And for our uh, fellow colleagues at Altamira and Adele, uh, and Creekside, if you guys want to hit me up, a Gibson at sonomaschools.org. Uh, thanks so much, and see you soon. Bye.